is this is what they're doing to these characters, man. Like they're expecting you to root for people that are genuinely horrible human beings. Um, speaking of which, She Hulk. Oh God, <laughs> I knew it was coming. <laughs> we, we've had we're good. We're doing the good, the bad, and the ugly tonight. And so we've we've done the bad with Rings of Power. Now it's time to talk about the ugly. Jesus and... Christ! For a second there, I thought you were going to say the good. I was like, drink it, don't you dare. <laughs> no, no, we've got House of the Dragon. That's good. But this. <laughs> fucking hell man this is genuine pain watching this show like it's not even like i object to the the source material or anything like that it's just it's not even got the bare bones of entertainment it's about as funny as a fucking terminal cancer diagnosis uh, none of the characters are likable um every situation they put them in is ridiculous and it's such a horrible waste of great actors like you've got benedict wong Who's awesome, but like God, they just ab- use and abuse that character, man. Yeah, honestly, if I, I can get us started because there's so many they things. Made really silly. The um the reality is, I don't know if you knew about this, but they were they were originally the origin of her powers and how she learned to understand them, quote unquote, with uh, in episode one that we saw. That was originally going to be episode eight. That's 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 from what I've heard anyway. But they decided late in the game. Uh oh. People aren't going to want to watch this show if they don't understand how she got these powers. And that's hence hence her line about that. It's meta, the fourth wall break in the first episode. She was like, you're not going to focus on the cool lore show if you don't see how I got my powers. So they moved it. That's indicative of how they would have made this show. Uh, sorry, couple that with the information that they said they were going to have a full-on trial of three episodes with Blonsky or something, but they decided to cut it because they don't know how to write law. <laughs> All this put together. They're, they're fucking moving all these episodes around. They don't know exa- exactly how they're structuring it, all this sort of stuff. They're not really connected, these episodes, either. The fact that you can move them around means that, that, that there's no real through line. They're just making episodes and hoping you don't really notice that there's no threads. And I didn't see anything to illustrate this better than episode. the previous episode. Wong is told, you, you're a fugitive. You've kidnapped someone. You took them out of prison. You know, you, you've got to face... Uh, the results of that. It's like, oh shit. And he runs away. It's like, all right. So that going forward in the MCU, Wong is now a criminal. Well, on the run, the American government will want to hunt him down. It's like, that's crazy, but okay. Yeah, sure. Next episode, he's literally in court and, and he's, he's dealing with a case and they've completely forgotten that he's a fugitive. I like shit like this blows my mind. I'm like, you, you don't even know what happened in the other episode when you made this one, do you? Who knows which one was written first? I have no idea. I, I, I just oh. the defense I've seen the one defense I, I've seen of this show, and it's a qualified defense as well, and it's also one that I don't particularly agree with. But the one defense I've seen which makes any kind of sense is that, well, okay, it, yeah, it has all of these faults that you've mentioned, but it's not supposed to be a narrative comedy. It's supposed to be a sitcom, is the defense that I've heard mentioned. Um, and I can see why people might think that because it's clearly borrowed cues from sitcom style productions. The problem is it doesn't think it's a sitcom. So it is actually introducing narrative elements that then do create these massive inconsistencies and that do require you to remember what happened in the previous episode uh, when you come to write the next one. So it, it's one of those things that I, I think it just doesn't know what it is. Is it supposed to be a sketch show? Well, there are sketch show elements in it, sure. Is it supposed to be a sitcom? Well, you know, there are some elements of that in as well. Is it supposed to be a narrative comedy that actually fits within the broader world of the MCU? Well, yeah, it's making attempts at that as well. But you can't do all three of these things at once. You do have to pick one and run with it. And the fact that it's tried to run with all three at the same time has just created this massive mess of nonsense. And also the, the fact that they don't know how to write any of it. So you know, everyone knows the interview where she said, well, we didn't know how to write court scenes. But but you can find another interview where she says, well, we didn't know how to write with CGI either. And I'm sure you can find another one where she'll say, well, I didn't know how to write action scenes. Like literally <laughs> the worst possible person to do an action legal comedy drama is someone who doesn't know what comedy is, doesn't know what action is, doesn't know what legal drama is, and has never used CGI before in her life. It's fantastic work the, all around. The the CGI is legit some of the worst that I've seen <laughs> in the past 10 years. Yeah. Like any scene where She-Hulk has to walk through an office, it's like a, watching a PS1 character move around. It's so mm-hmm. jerky. It's so yeah. unnatural. And, you know, I know that like they don't have a $100 million budget to play with, but holy fuck, man, it's Marvel. You've got to they at least the ones have that decided- some to do that you know it's it's like we didn't have we didn't have the money to buy the whole planet it's like so why are you trying to 
What are you doing? But the thing is that there was an interview again with, I mean, Jessica Gowers basically admitted that they didn't know what they were doing. There is another interview where she says, awesome. so I went to Kevin Feige and I said, look, we're doing a, a show about She-Hulk, so we're going to need some CGI. What kind of money can we spend? And apparently he gave her a blank check. He said, if you're doing a show about She-Hulk, then we want to see She-Hulk. And she said, well, that, that gave me the indication it was a blank check. So then I went and wrote the thing, started filming. And then somebody else from lower down in Disney and Marvel comes along and says, Ah, uh, money's a bit tight now, actually, guys. Can you cut some more of these of these scenes? And could you make She-Hulk Jen in a few more scenes? So I, I genuinely don't know that they knew how much money they had to spend. I think the impression was given when they pitched it that they would have a lot more money to spend than they did have to spend. So they had to really mm. downgrade and rush and do all the rest of it. And it's hard to know whether you put much blame on the writers and directors in that case, if it is just the case that you know Kevin yeah. Feige has just completely abandoned the steering wheel, much like I mean, I can, She-Hulk I can... herself does. Yeah, I mean, I can blame anyone behind the scenes in terms of budget for the the CGI looking terrible, but like the the, the writers have to take um, all the blame for just how generally shit the show is. Like, <laughs> yes, there, there's not a single gag in this entire show thus far that has made me even smile, you know. And that's that's it's just painful to watch, uh, and it's it's sad as well that they've got good actors involved in this like i said before like they've got benedict wong in for some reason and he just looks like he wants to die um you've got tim roth and i want to show you guys something actually because I, i've come to the conclusion that he's slowly morphing into timothy spall uh let me just sh- <laughs> uh hold really on. Uh, timothy yeah, spall lost me- a lot of weight recently didn't he he really has yeah uh so right hold on let me just bring it in so you can see it that that's Timothy Spall. That just looks like Tim Roth in this fucking show. He, I must he's, say. Yeah, he, he's sitting there. He honestly looks like he's been brought in off the street. Um, you know, told that you're going to be in this show. He had no time to prep or anything. Doesn't give a fuck. And he's just going to sit there in his chair and just say his lines and then get the fuck out of there. And <laughs> man, yeah, like again. <laughs> You know, Hulk was so long ago that most people have even forgotten who Abomination was. Yeah. But like they brought him back and they made him the subject of an entire episode. (sighs) Okay, fine. Yeah, sure. And they made it killing time with that, honestly. They're killing time with everything. This is this the show is about killing time because they have no story. It's like they they came to them ten minutes before they started shooting and said, uh, right, cool, you've got your budget, uh, go make a show. Fuck, we don't have a script. Ah, just think of something. Be all right. <laughs> That's what they did with Multiverse of Madness. But I mean, the, the, the Abomination stuff is is the example of where it is trying to sort of do narrative comedy in the sense that this is an ongoing through line that they have to cover. But they, they can't even write the the independent individual scenes properly with that. The, the court scene when you know, he's in the prison and she's representing him. We did a review over... Uh, uh, Drinky, I think you know Mr. Brown, Mr. Brown Lines. We were reviewing that over I on do, his yeah. channel. Someone, it might have been me or somebody else, I can't remember, pointed out that they have the scene where the abomination is um, is called to give evidence and she's playing for time because she wants Wong to turn up and he hasn't arrived yet. Yeah. So she encourages Abomination to go on a long spiel. And then when he goes on for a little bit too long, she decides, oh, no, no, stop it now, stop it. You're getting... you going away from the point but that's one scene that they haven't managed to hold together the whole point was to play for time and now you're stopping him playing for time and it's i, I think they were trying to make a joke out of it but one of the so that one of the defining features of this show is that you sort of think they might be trying to make it funny occasionally but you're not even sure if they're trying to tell a joke because it's that unfunny I, well, I think it, yeah it, when, when it's everything is unfunny like you never yeah. know really. and this signifies where we're at with marvel i mean we finally get the abomination looking like the frack and abomination and it's a joke because marvel's mm-hmm. a joke you know and they're like well you know she goes different it's a sitcom it's not different from everything else we've watched in stage four it's it's gag after i mean pointless gag after pointless gag to uh, if either in the films it's to get away from an emotional moment as fast as possible and as drinker said it's just to fill time uh, i think it's partially the bob chapik effect maybe if they're pulling some funding because he did that with the parks too I, I know he's meant to save everything but he's not going to that we're, we're gonna get so much more of this and disney just doesn't care disney marvel knows the marvel stand will show up and they can just put out whatever they want they'll get defended for the first couple of episodes and they'll lose interest i mean this pattern has now repeated six times when are people gonna wake up to it wait you know oh the first episode not so bad i didn't feel that way but some people felt that way and then nobody talks about it by the time it gets to the last episode and when daredevil shows up i'm gonna, I'm gonna lose it that's why i'm gonna lose it. 
isn't he in like the next episode? Is yeah. Like, yes. yeah. So many people are afraid of what they're going to do now. It's like yeah. they should be. Episode have got it's gotten worse to people. So now they're so afraid. They're like, oh no. They were almost happy like that Daredevil was coming, but now they're afraid of what they're going to do when he shows up. My, my my rationale when I watch these shows, or at least I learn about them, is like, oh oh my god, which characters are they going to butcher in this one? <laughs> And so it's like you, you almost look for the guest appearances, like, oh Christ, they're gonna kill Daredevil, or they're gonna like annihilate him as a character. Um, and that that's what you do. It like you operate on dread. It's like, what are they gonna ruin next? Yeah. That's all that's all it comes to. They make they get Wong is like incredibly stupid and petty. Um, and it was really weird this episode. I don't know if you uh because Gary was saying you dropped out of it at a certain point, right? But like the there's a point where a bunch of demons are released on Earth. That just casually happens in this episode. Uh, Where's Doctor Strange? Shouldn't he be here? Helping well, out? Wong's like, well, we couldn't afford Wong. him. Wong's the Sorcerer oh, yeah. Supreme, of course. So he is. Is yeah, well, Wong's great, but Strange is, like, on another level, as we've seen. Yeah. He's, like, why wouldn't you bring him in? Why? When And he's so casual about, like, how I can handle a bunch of demons invading Earth. Yeah, sure, I just need She-Hulk. She-Hulk's the one that I need to help me. How bizarre. She can't even do anything. Like, exactly. what is her strength and here? Then... She's slightly stronger than a normal person. <laughs> And for anybody who hasn't seen it, right, there's a bunch of demons flying around in a big room. So he opens up a portal to a place where he wants to throw them all in. Uh, at first, he uses, like, a, a magical whip to grab one at a time to throw them in while mm -hmm. she is picking them up and throwing them in. And it's like, one, one, one. Bear in mind, there's, like, 50 in the room. So it's like, this is going to take a while. And then at the end of the scene, Wog is just like, all right, I'm going to turn it into a giant tornado-y thing. It sucks all of them in. Yeah. It's like, Oh man, probably you should think with that in future. Yeah, why did you even need She Hulk? What was yeah. the and then the scene ends with her grabbing the last one before we send it back? She shows it to the guy they were in a court case with, and she's like, "Sign the um the like the the cease and desist." Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, you you better sign it. But she basically is saying, "If you don't sign it, I'll release the demon onto you." And I was just like, "Did did the lawyer just threaten someone's life unless they sign a contract?" Yeah. Does she know how this? Is? She's one of the worst fucking lawyers I've ever seen. But it's seen. okay, like, Mahler. You don't understand. It's okay because she's threatening funny. a man, so it doesn't matter <laughs> when you do that to them. That was this another is thing. like that every just... every fucking dude in this show is either a pussy or an idiot or evil or a shallow narcissistic moron. Like that's all the categories <laughs> they fall into. There's nothing out that falls outside that. <laughs> She should it's, be disbarred. It's true. It's it's so yes. interesting how the, the writers perceive the world and like like one half of the human race. It, it's just it's conceived entirely out of spite and hatred. It, it, single thirty year old women uh, about two hours into drinking box wine. That's that's the the, the writers' room for this show. Gary, don't you oh. criticize box wine? It's very can efficient. <laughs> Yeah, Gary, can we can we really just that that what you just said? So, what did we see happen in this episode? Right, we saw a, a woman in a presumably is she mid thirties. I, I shit you not, man. Tatiana Maslany looks about mid forties. Like there's she's, some close up shots of her. And I was like, so she's definitely a mid. Like, we'll, we'll so we'll we'll just we'll stay there. She goes on a dating app, not getting much luck, and uh, then she decides to use her she hulkness. To yeah. bait a man in that she actually wants. 36. Then she gets him, beds him, in the morning, turns back into her actual self, at least that's how she feels about it, and he uh, kind of feels catfished. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the show doesn't realize what it's done. Again! Again! We've done this before! <laughs> <laughs> they did it again! And like, she's annoyed. Know. She's like, <laughs> I, think, I, like I think the show actually thinks that she's in the right. Like, oh, how unfortunate that he only likes you for your she hulkness and not your personality. On a literal, like, one, th they hook up overnight. Like, this is what humans do, but they're not allowed to lie to each other about this sort of thing. It's, uh, it's, it's really bad. It's really unethical. And she's just like, oh, only liking me for my she hulkness, which she used to bait him. Yeah, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I was like, yeah. do, "Do they know what they've just written?" <laughs> they, they don't, that's the thing; they they don't care, and like they never think to like interrogate their own like logical process on this one. It's literally just, yeah, like uh, men are just shallow, and they they want a hot woman, and that's all that matters. That's what she wanted. 
She just wanted exactly. the whole guy. She even says, "Oh, you, you, you know, looks don't really matter, but they do." Yeah, they, but they do exactly. But imagine mm. if a dude had said that about a woman in a Marvel oh, show. Oh man, I you could read it right. as like a, a sincere attempt to expand its audience. There, because like the first video I did, I was like, "Well, who is this for?" It's ob obviously it's just upper middle class, at least very professional single women in the thirties in in metropolitan areas. I'm kind of wondering maybe whether this entire episode is not just to expand the audience to men who secretly like the idea of being pegged by a big green woman. And uh, then maybe <laughs> that's like broadening the audience a little bit. And then, you know, so, that already describes part of the audience. So someone said um, <laughs> in chat, everyone knows Jen is She-Hulk. How is that a catfish? She, he didn't know. Did you, no. did you see the guy's reaction? He didn't know. Yeah. To the I, point I, where I he, know, he was... He, sure. Yeah, like that's the thing. Confused, it's one thing yeah. to say, uh, you know, he should know, but he doesn't. You gotta let people fucking know. And, did, uh, did, you got, you got love as well. Like you know when he's just killing time because she's gone away from like through a portal with Wong. She might have been gone for hours. Who knows? And he's just like stayed in the exact same place on her yeah. couch, and he's reading like Bad Feminist by some fucking like awful person that no one cares about. But like that's that's how the the writers want to establish him that he's a good guy because he reads feminist literature. <laughs> <laughs> what fucking dude that. in his right mind what is going to read a book like that in his spare time? Ever he's does that. Up on his phone, just like ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, yeah, man, a, show, a show to complain about catcalling, and then for her to do that, like mm -hmm. jeez. <laughs> Seriously, got Wonder Woman flashbacks. I was like, damn. Oh, yeah. Um, oh. yeah. I said this. I said this about the MCU. Their their slogan just needs to be "It's okay when women do it." Yep, that's pretty much what it comes down to. From the studio that brought you a woman enslaving men, women, and children, where they couldn't even go to the bathroom, we bring you date <laughs> rape. Nice. <Yeah. laughs> oh man, what oh, what man. a wonderful time we live in. I I almost wonder if it is. So like some part of it is intentional because if I'm trying to impute motive to them, then the only one I can think of is they want you to complain about it because if you complain about it when a woman does it to a man, that means you should therefore see why it's bad when a man does it to a woman. But the problem is that like I don't think they're that they intelligent. They don't frame it, they don't frame no. it like and they don't that. frame it that way. No, exactly. They yeah, don't frame it like say... that either. It, it just comes across like it is just the most tone deaf, inconsistent I... production. Dude, ever. I got the distinct impression that the show's idea is like, isn't it sad that the world wants her for She-Hulk and not her character, not her personality? Isn't that sad? When it's like, well, she used that. She did. She's she's just as part of the problem as perceiving the world's problem with it. Mm -hmm. Remember in the previous episode where she was like, man, people are going to think I was hired for She-Hulk and not for my expertise. Like, you were hired <laughs> for She-Hulk and yep. not for your expertise. That's how See, it happened. Wouldn't an interesting character arc for her be that, like, you know, she... she takes on the persona of Sea Hulk, she becomes a little bit drunk with power, and she, you know, uh, becomes arrogant. She maybe even becomes, like, aggressive and violent towards people and eventually realizes the, the error of her ways and realizes with great power comes great responsibility. Mm. You know, you can't just shirk that responsibility. Character journey is a shocking suggestion. Isn't yeah. that what happened in the comics, though? Because doesn't she get drunk and get sacked because she, she, she becomes because a bit she... of an alcoholic? Well, she sits and, on the photocopier and, you know, photocopies her yeah. art cheeks. But, like, but that immediately makes her such a, a better character because, you know, the show tried to portray when she got sacked and then the next shot you see her in this massively swanky apartment and you realise there's actually no material consequence for her being sacked and she gets rehired within five minutes anyway. But you can't really sympathise with her position because she's so clearly not suffering from it. Whereas if you get her sacked because she's actually done something wrong... And it's actually a result of some deep character flaw, like, you know, falling to alcoholism for a bit that she needs to redeem herself from. It doesn't matter if she lives in a mansion. She's still got the character flaw, and that's something you can invest in and watch yeah. her grow from. And you can still do that in the context of a comedy. Um, and hell, they haven't exactly made this one a comedy, so you can't say, well, that would be too serious. Well, your fundamental journey there is, like, taking a person who's powerless, or, like, at least physically powerless, um, suddenly giving them immense power and strength um, and watching what they do with that. And inevitably, they're, they're going to have a period of adjustment where they misuse it and they, they get a little bit, you know, full of themselves, whatever it might be. They have to learn how to temper that. That's a character journey right there. But they'll never do that because that would imply that she's got something to learn, you know, and that she's flawed in some way. And they they won't do it. It's like they're just going to keep it, like, really simplistic. She's awesome. She's right about everything. It's just the rest of the world that has to adjust to her. Dude, I remember when people, when they were first talking about episode one, they were like, don't worry, in the next few episodes, they're going to 
they're going to have her learn that she was wrong about what she said to yeah. Bruce. We haven't addressed <laughs> Bruce at all. <laughs> like we've been doing her own thing for ages. Yeah, I, I love that. Moment where she, well, when she breaks the fourth wall and she's like, "Oh, don't worry, this isn't going to be one of those shows that just relies on cameos to to sell itself." Mm. It's like, and then they try to make a joke out of it, and it's like, well, apart from Bruce and Wong and and uh, Emil Blonsky, and you know, but it's like you are literally doing that. That is the only reason people are watching this garbage. Uh, this is the thing, man. I think we should give them uh, less credit for like it's not witty dialogue; it's just the truth. They are writing it when she said having Wong in here will give us immunity to Twitter like criticism for a week. So, like that's probably true. People mm -hmm. like yeah. Wong; it's good enough. Yeah. But it, the, the, she's also correct in that it'll only last a week. Eventually, people will be like, man, She-Hulk was shit. They'll be like, yeah, She-Hulk was shit. 